Hello, my name is Dale Wilhite. I'm right now in Alpine, Wyoming. If you want to find anything about me, go to MySpace, Facebook, or Twitter, uh, where I have accounts. This here is about leg perthes, and it's a disease uh, of the hip, of a man or woman's hip, and it, it affects the uh, hip socket, uh, which is the disease that I've had. I d developed it in 1966 when I was six years old. And on my right hip, I, you know, you have the full socket. We all have full sockets. On my right hip, I only have half of one. And what it does, it can leave your leg a quarter inch shorter or a little bit shorter than the other leg. Mine's a quarter inch shorter than the other. That's why I have to put lifts inside my shoe. They used to have to put up like a lift um, under my uh, under my shoes, you know, uh, on the uh, heel uh, to balance it out. Because if you don't, you'll end up, I end up walking around limping all the time and it brings a lot of pain uh, as a result of it. Uh, I, my personal belief, the reason how I developed leg perthes was the fact that between 63 and 65 in Bangor, at uh, Dow Air Force Base in uh, Bangor, Maine, I got that daylight speed out of me by my, my two brothers' father's freaky wife, uh, where she broke my jaw three times, my nose three times, she busted my chin, she broke my left arm, tried to freeze me to death in the snow out there on a flight line one night, and uh, her last attempt to kill me was uh, trying to scald me in hot water. But uh, that's how I think I got it. I think I got it from basically being thrown down the stairs. Um, that's where I, my jaw and nose and all that got broken so many times was being thrown down these big flight of stairs. You know, because there, the housing, you know, you uh, and families had two-story housing uh, at that time at Dow Air Force Base. But the physicians say, and these are military physicians primarily, say there's really no uh, explanation as to what leg perthes is or what causes it. And, of course, it was named after a doctor named Perthes who discovered the uh, disease. Anyhow, what it does is something like, I guess it's a blood disorder, eats away at half of your socket in your right hip, or in my, my case, right hip. Uh, you know, you develop Lee Perthes in either hip, I guess. Uh, I've only met one person in my entire life that's uh, had it, and that was a girl up in uh, Maryland at a Navy base there when I was, uh, when they went, we we're going to actually do an operation what turned out to be an operation in which these military doctors were going to try to experiment and figure and we're going to go in there and operate on my hip to do something which really didn't make any sense to my dad and this is when i was adopted and so uh he said no you're not going to do that which was a wise decision because they didn't know what they were doing and i was about to become a guinea pig anyhow what it does or at least in my case it leads my uh right leg the quarter inch shorter than the other and so as i said when i joined the military uh in 79 uh, at the age of 18, uh, about to turn 19, of course, uh, I just put a lift in my shoes, and that balanced it out, and I could walk. Now, when I was 12 years old at Maxwell Air Force Base, uh, a physician there uh, mistakenly told me that I would be in a wheelchair by the time I'm 26. Again, he was wrong. I'm 50 years old now, and I'm still not in a wheelchair. I've come close to it, and I do have problems sometimes uh, with my leg, and sometimes it can be very painful. But the, I, the whole idea about uh, dealing with leg birthdays is that you need to ride a bike often. You need to make sure that you're that when you walk, you have your shoes, your you know, you're balanced out. You got you got to get that lift inside your shoe just perfect, so that it's even, and then you can withstand the pain. I went on to play football, basketball, baseball, and I mean, I we played tackle football as a kid. Uh, no helmets, no nothing. We just we just beat the daylights out of each other uh, playing football. I was living in a place called Howard's Creek in my teenage years in northern Florida, which is near Weewa Hitchka. And uh, we would play some of the uh, kids in other towns. Uh, and, you know, no organized team. It was just our community against theirs. And we just beat the, the like I said, we played hard nose football in which people sometimes, some kids got hurt. But the, what I did was from, well, let me first say this. From 1966 to 1972, I spent a lot of time on crutches. What they do, they give you a set of crutches, they put a brace on you, and your leg lifts up, kind of like this. And you walk around with this brace on, uh, with your foot in it and hanging up in the air. And I just couldn't take this anymore, sitting watching all these other kids play sports, watching these uh, kids in uh, school uh, and out after school playing games, and I wasn't allowed to play. Well... At the age of 12, after that position, tell me, well, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 26 years old, so, um, and oh, yeah, and he said you never joined the Air Force, which I did join the Air Force. I joined, basically, my main motive was 
I wanted to prove that I could get in because I didn't like this position telling me that I couldn't. I don't like being told what I can't do sometimes. And he also said I'd never play, you know, school sports or any sports of any kind. Well, I proved him wrong. I went home. At, they were at, at that time, Selma Air Force Base. But this was down in Maxwell Air Force Base that saw the position in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. And um, I just told the parents, I'm throwing the crutches off, the brace off. And I went out there and I played as hard as I could as any kid. I also began to take jobs in my teenage years in northern Florida uh, out in the uh, soybean fields after school and on the weekends. Working very hard labor jobs. And I've worked some very hard labor jobs in my lifetime. And I did, I've done it because they said I would never be able to do it. And I think that's the motive, the, the factor behind me working as hard as I did uh, and taking a lot of risk. You know, I've been a semi truck driver, bus driver. Uh, I've worked, like I say, as a kid at the soybean fields. I once worked for UPS on the conveyor belt. It didn't last long, but I did it. And uh, I've done quite a few hard labor jobs in my lifetime. So you can do that with Lake Perthes. But again, you have to make sure you balance yourself right. You have the right uh, uh, lift inside your shoes. You don't have to go to the doctor and get one of these on, on the bottom of your shoes. But you got to make sure you wear it all the time because I forget a lot still. Uh, and like wearing slippers like I have on now, you know, and then I start walking down the street somewhere and all of a sudden the pain stops. Just like when I go back to Las Vegas all the time, where I got uh, family, uh, I can start walking down the strip somewhere and before long I have to sit down for a little while. Because, you know, I didn't put the right lips inside my shoes. You have to do that. But nonetheless, leg perthes is a very rare disease. I've only met one person in my lifetime that's ever had it. And it uh, uh, really has no, nobody really knows where it comes from, what causes it. I still think it was caused from the beatings. Uh, these physicians don't really know how to treat it. And you just kind of have to live with it. But if anybody ever hears a video that has leg perthes or knows, knows, especially a kid that has leg perthes, uh, and they're told they'll be in a wheelchair by the time they're 26. Tell them, no, they won't. They can they can still live a good, uh, productive life and work as hard as I could, or as I did, if they choose to. Uh, you just have to be a little bit smart, and you're just going to have to accept some of the pain that comes with it. Because some days, especially at night, the pain is really, really bad. Even in uh, basic training, you know, I had to deal with the pain sometimes. It got so bad there. But I couldn't let, let them know, you know, about it because I would have uh, been discharged. Uh, a lot of people go in the military with, with ailments, they just have to hide it because, and I think the military knows people do. And if you can hide it, well, and get through basic training, get through the military, that's fine. Well, most of the time the military could care less. Um, but I didn't like being told I wasn't going to join the military, and I proved them wrong, even though that uh, major at Maxwell Air Force Base will never know that. But just keep in mind that Lake Perth is a, is a very rare disease, and there's no cure for it. Uh, the only cure... Uh, would be if you can get an artificial heart, or artificial heart, sorry, artificial hip, which could run you about twenty-five to fifty thousand bucks. And if you have insurance and you get insurance after you come up with late birthdays, then no insurance company is going to pay for it. So that's why it's important uh, for parents to have insurance on their kids, because that's usually when you'll get a kid is you'll usually be a kid. A kid would usually be the one to get late birthdays, not an adult. Uh, so if they have insurance on their kids or they're on their insurance, you know. Uh, they uh, could probably get an artificial hip, hip for them uh, by the time they're 18 years old. I think you'd have to wait till they're fully grown. And so if you keep your uh, keep that kid on your insurance policy, they might just uh, insurance company just might have to pay for it. Anyhow, I just wanted to pass this on uh, because it's a very rare disease, something you never hear talked about in the media. And I just wanted to bring it to a few people's uh, attention. Thank you for your time.